A major uh, Russian attack on the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv underway. Alex Marquardt uh, is on the scene for us uh, in Kyiv right now. Looks like those skies are still uh, showing the result of, of that attack, whatever it was, but it's pretty illuminating right now. Wolf, it is extraordinary. I mean, this attack happened just about half an hour ago um, when we heard this loud strike on that area of southwest Kyiv. And for the past half hour, uh, you have seen that glow in the sky, uh, really bright red, just sort of reflecting off of that cloud right above it. Uh, it is clearly a fire of some sort. We're still trying to figure out uh, what exactly that target may have been. Um, it is over near to an airport, and we know that the Russians have been targeting uh, military installations, military targets. They claim that that is all they're targeting, uh, but at the same time, over near where that fire is now uh, ha burning, uh, there was a, an apartment building that was also struck today that the Ukrainians uh, accused the Russians uh, of hitting with a missile or with a rocket. Now, this comes about 24 hours after President Zelensky warned that last night would be a decisive night, that it would be a difficult night. Uh, but it passed with relatively uh, little interruption, uh, relatively few incidents. Uh, but now this night is shaping up to be uh, a fair bit worse. Um, I don't want to jump to any sort of conclusions. Uh, what we have heard so far uh, are two loud strikes uh, from my vantage point here uh, in the capital of, of, of Ukraine. Uh, but at the same time, it is, it is that quiet uh, from the Russians uh, that is really quite disconcerting. As Jim Shudo was just saying uh, a short time ago, the assessments were that uh, Russia could take this city in 24 to 48 hours. They clearly did not do that. Uh, why did they not do that? Well, for one, the, the Ukrainians, we know, have been putting up fierce resistance. Uh, this fight is not going as well as the Russians clearly had hoped. Um, but now they, there could be an indication that they plan to step up their assault um, on this capital city. We know, um, or it is, it is presumed, from the intelligence assessments that their goal is to uh, get rid of the Zelensky government, install a government that is much more sympathetic. Um, and they have faced significant resistance in trying to get into this city. Uh, that may be changing now. Well, Alex, uh, stay, stand by. Uh, we're going to get back to you. Obviously, a very dangerous situation unfolding in Kyiv. Uh, in the meantime, I want to get some analysis from our military analyst, our retired Major General James Spider Marks. He's here with me. Uh, you're over there. You're watching all of it. What's your reaction to what we're seeing and hearing in the city of, of nearly three million people? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Wolf. Let me let me show you something up front. If I could do that for you, the forces that are coming into Kiev are coming in in this direction. This arrow is an approximation. If you realize that what we have here is the Dnieper River, the Russians did not deploy forces in this direction because they would have had to do a river crossing or some sort. They would have had a separation of forces. So what we see now is they're coming into Kiev. Let's kind of go into Kiev and see what that looks like now. So when you look at it a little more closely, again, here's the river. What's important to realize is that the Russian forces originally were up here at the airport, kind of out of the city. They are now working their way into the city. When you come into a city of this size, of three million, this is incredibly compartmentalized. This is where the terrain starts to suck up the personnel. This is all about infantry fighting. This is dismounted fighting. This needs to be done outside of a vehicle. What we're seeing probably tonight is the preparation of that battle space, which is not going to be very precise. It's going to be very bloody and it's going to be very broad. A lot of rubble will be caused as a result of this insertion of rocket fire, missile fire, and probably some air fire. What's happening right now also is the Russians do not command the airspace, which is a good thing in preparation of this. So moving into the city, the key thing for the Ukrainians at this point, number one, they've got home field advantage. They've got the terrain to their great advantage. They need to start making some very clear decisions on whether they want to start to drop these bridges across the Dnieper River. Again, if the Russians, let's assume I'm wrong, and the Russians have forces here, they now would be separated from the forces over there. That gives the Ukrainians a great advantage. But again, there's a lot of force that needs to come in from the Russians. 
General, stand by. We're going to get back to you. Uh, we're watching this situation unfold, the breaking news, very, very dramatic. I want to discuss what's going on right now with the former U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson. He was all, also at one point uh, a senior official at the Pentagon. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, as you've been watching, all of us have That's been funny. watching, to our shock, these massive explosions in the capital, uh, Kiev. What are you looking for? What are you watching? Uh, what do you anticipate in the coming hours as the Ukrainians are desperately trying to hold on to their capital? First, Wolf, my, I, I salute your colleagues at CNN who are literally on the front lines there in Kyiv, who are at the risk of their own personal safety, uh, bringing us uh, information about what's happening in that part of the world. Uh, the entire free world, Wolf, right now is rooting for President Zelensky, his government, and his people in, in Ukraine. And reportedly, they're putting up a stiff resistance to the Russian military uh, in the invasion there. This is an example of an instance where very often the will to fight, even if only with a rifle or a Molotov cocktail, to defend your, your freedom, your family, and your homeland, can overcome uh, a, a Russian soldier following orders in a Russian-made tank. Now, having said that, I, I believe that this is going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, I believe it's going to be ugly. I believe it's going to be bloody. Americans need to prepare themselves for some of the images we are going to see of civilian casualties in, in Ukraine. Many Americans will then ask, why aren't we doing something about this militarily? Why aren't we intervening? Why aren't we getting into this fight? And the Biden administration will come under tremendous international and domestic political pressure to intervene militarily, despite President Biden's pledge not to put boots on the ground in, in Ukraine. And so very soon, the Biden administration, I predict, is going to reach a serious decision point about what to do in this in this situation, consistent with our values as Americans, Wolf, uh, we have in the past um, intervened militarily to defend freedom. But we need to remind ourselves that in situations like this, whether it's Ukraine or Libya or Vietnam or Kosovo, very often, or Afghanistan, very often it's much easier to actually get into a situation like this than it is to extract yourself from a situation like this. And the fear is that uh, if the U.S. or the NATO allies, for that matter, were to get militarily involved with boots on the ground in Ukraine uh, with anti-aircraft missiles, with warplanes flying over, uh, that could lead to a direct conflict, a direct war with Russia, a nuclear power, right? Correct. And we have managed to avoid a direct conflict with Russia through the entire Cold War through the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, where things were pretty intense then. Uh, we skillfully maneuvered around a direct conflict militarily with Russia. And if we're not careful now, we could find ourselves in exactly that. And so um, over the next days, weeks, it's going to take a lot of discipline and, and deliberate thinking on the part of President Biden and his cabinet uh, to avoid a direct confrontation with Russia as they have pledged to try to avoid. It's, a, it's such a dangerous situation right now, and our hearts go out to the people, the civilians, the casualties, uh, clearly in Ukraine right now. Jay Johnson, the former Secretary of Homeland Security, thank you so much.